Pegasus Bridge, D-Day, June 6, 1944. Six British horse gliders are descending towards the Normandy countryside. Inside, the 181 men of D Company, Oxford and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, have one of the most important missions of the D-Day landings. They'll be the first to engage the enemy, and sadly, one of their men will become the first Allied soldier to be killed on D-Day. Inside the lead glider, call sign Chalk 91, the operations commander, Major John Howard, reviews his orders. In a few hours' time, thousands of soldiers will be landing on the beaches of Normandy. The Germans have several panzer divisions held in reserve, which could stop the invasion in its tracks. Fortunately, the River Orne provides a natural barrier between the panzer reserves and the D-Day beaches. But between the coast and the city of Conn, there is one crossing point the Germans could use. Near the town of Ranville, a pair of bridges cross the Orne River and its neighbour, the Conn Canal. These bridges will become known as Pegasus and Horsa. Major Howard's orders are to capture the two bridges so they can be used by the Allies to advance the invasion eastwards from the beaches and to stop the Germans bringing their reinforcements from the east and attacking the Normandy beaches at their most vulnerable flank. Howard and his men will outnumber the German defenders three to one. That should make capturing the bridges fairly straightforward. But Howard needs to capture the bridges intact, and that could be difficult since intelligence reports indicate the bridges have been rigged with explosive charges and the Germans have orders to blow them up rather than let them be captured by the Allies. Surprise will be critical to the success of the mission, and surprise is exactly what they achieve. Despite the pressure, fear, the dark night, and almost certainly being significantly overweight, Chalk 91, flown by Staff Sergeant Jim Woolwick, lands just 43 metres from Pegasus Bridge. Just one minute later, glider number two slams into the field, followed by number three. At the same time, Three other gliders are headed towards the Orne River Bridge. Gliders 5 and 6 land close to their objective, but glider number 4 suffered navigational issues, landing at a bridge on a completely different river some 20 kilometres away. Air Chief Marshal Sir Trafford Lee Mallory had initially believed non-commissioned army pilots to be incapable of flying such a challenging mission. But afterwards, he described this as one of the most outstanding flying achievements of the entire war. Despite the accuracy, the landings had been rough, and many of the men were knocked unconscious for a few moments. Lieutenant Sandy Smith had been shot out the front of his glider, flying right past the pilots before smashing through the windshield. When he came round, he found a corporal leaning over him, asking, What are we waiting for, sir? Pilot Oliver Bolland was just as supportive of the men in his glider, shouting at them to piss off and do what you're paid to do. As the men assembled and began to move towards the bridge, the first Allied soldier on D-Day had already died. Lance Corporal Fred Greenhalf had been thrown from his glider on landing, and either unconscious or under the extreme weight of his equipment, had tragically drowned in the lake between the two bridges. Incredibly, over on the bridge, the German sentry, Private Romer, had heard the crash of the glider's landing, but he wrongly assumed it was part of a damaged bomber falling from the sky, and so he continued with his patrol. Lieutenant Den Brotheridge and his platoon were the first to reach Pegasus Bridge. On the bridge, Private Romer sees the platoon of 20 British paratroopers sprinting towards him. Just 18 years old, and one of only two sentries on duty, Romer decided to bravely run away. Brotheridge sees the second sentry preparing a flare and quickly kills the man with his Sten gun before sprinting across the bridge. At the same time, two soldiers throw hand grenades into the concrete pillbox at the eastern end of the bridge. This was an important objective, not just because it was one of the stronger defensive points, but the intelligence reports stated the pillbox was where the detonator was kept for the explosives connected to the bottom of the bridge. Just 50 soldiers defended the bridge. The officers and senior NCOs were well-trained, highly motivated German soldiers, but the majority of the men were Eastern European conscripts who had little interest in risking their lives for a bridge, and they quietly slipped away when the fighting started. Just as he was about to clear the end of the bridge, Lieutenant Den Brotheridge is shot in the neck. Sadly, the wound was fatal, and he became the first Allied soldier to die from enemy action on D-Day. He was just 28 years old, and would leave behind his wife and unborn daughter. Now on the far side of the river, the company spread out and begin to clear the trenches running along the riverbank. Sergeant Thornton and Lieutenant Fox discover an underground bunker, where amazingly they find three German soldiers who have managed to sleep through all of the commotion. Thornton gathers up their rifles, whilst Fox shakes one of the sleeping soldiers. 
Thinking it's one of his friends messing around, the German tells Fox not so politely to go away, before turning over and going back to sleep. Whilst D Company have been fighting, a platoon of sappers have been examining the underside of the bridge where they make a surprising discovery. The bridge had indeed been rigged for demolition, but astonishingly, the explosives themselves had never been put into position. And with that, Pegasus Bridge had been secured. At the same time, a runner arrives with more good news. The Orne River Bridge had also been captured. Major Howard orders his radio operator to transmit the code words for success, Ham and Jam. D Company had secured both bridges in less than 10 minutes, losing just two men in the process. At 3am the company were reinforced by men from the 7th Parachute Battalion. The Germans counterattacked numerous times using tanks, boats and infantry, but the British forces held strong and refused to be pushed back from the bridges. The capture of Pegasus Bridge meant the elite SS Panzer Reserve units weren't able to use the bridges to attack the invasion forces at the narrow flank at Sword Beach. From here they could easily have steamrolled along the beaches, inflicting massive casualties and quite possibly derailed the entire invasion. Instead, they first had to head away from the invasion to skirt around the city of Kong, arriving at the battle much later and forcing them to attack the invasion head on. This provided the Allies with vital time to gain a foothold on the Normandy beachheads from which they could mount a solid defence. D Company's actions on D-Day quite possibly saved the entire invasion. At the very least, it saved significant numbers of lives on the Normandy beaches. Please help us out and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more animated war stories.